Hi there everybody and welcome to another one of my videos. Um, on today's video I have this Toyota Verso. Um, this is a 2009 and um, I'm gonna be changing the oil and the oil filter. Uh, this is a 1.8 and it's an automatic. Um, I'm also gonna top up some screen wash fluid and I'm gonna check the level and percentage of antifreeze. Um, so I'm just going to start with some uh, technical stuff and the manual here regarding the oil. So um, this engine is a 1.8 as I mentioned. Um, if you look at your manual you'll find this information here. The 1.8 engine is a 2ZR. can't really see anything with the shine there. Right, it's a 2ZR FAE. Um, the other one, it's a, uh, it's a 1.6, the one ZR FAE, and <clears throat> the two of two engines there. I'm not concentrating on the diesel ones. You have some diesel versions here, but the petrol ones. So the petrol engine, as shown in here. Gasoline engine takes 4.2 liters with a filter change. If you didn't replace the filter, it takes 3.9 liters. The one below here is the diesel one, and as I said, I'm not um, focusing on that. And then we have a oil grade down here. Gasoline engine. It says 20W50 and 15W40. API grade SL or SM multi grade engine oil. We can use 10W30, 5W30, 5W20, and 0W20. Um, I'm actually going to use 5W30 in this, in today's um, engine oil change. So, as we establish, 4.2 liters. Uh, I'm waiting for my oil filter, but uh, we'll have a look at the part number on the one that we remove. And. Um, you also have a, a guide here, more or less, of temperatures, um, what they recommend, of oils that you could use. Uh, this is for gasoline engines here. It gives you the temperature down at the bottom, centigrades or Fahrenheit, and then it gives you the the type that you could use, 5W20, 5W30 and whatnot. So you can see 5W30 covers quite a, a big range. It says 0W20 is preferred. Um, however, I found that depending where you live, 0W20 seems uh, very thin and it ten tends to burn if you're in a hot environment and it starts forming carbon, um, which is why I'm using 5W30. So. Having established that, you make your mind up whatever oil you want to use. Depends where you live and whatnot. Um, obviously, if you live in Siberia and it's minus 50, you may want to use the very thin oil. Uh, but if you live in the desert or the Sahara Desert where it's 50 degrees plus, uh, then you may want to use the thicker oil. Again, up to you. Um, so. I'm going to start by topping up some screen wash fluid. So open this little cover here. That's where the screen wash fluid goes. And uh, I recommend putting the proper stuff because if you put just water in there and temperatures go to minus five, minus 10, the water will freeze. You will have no water coming out your jets and you'll be stuck because you won't be able to wash your windscreen. So I'm using this one here. I get it concentrated, I mix it myself, so that's already mixed, but um, you could get some uh, ready mixed and just pour it in there straight without having to be mixing it yourself. And that's it, I've got a full tank. So it was pretty full to start with, to be fair. 
Of course, when it's empty, it takes a lot more than that. Okay. Uh, next, we're gonna check to the coolant level and the percentage of antifreeze. And sort of same principle as this. You wanna have the proper stuff, antifreeze in there, because if it, if you only have water there and it freezes, um, it can damage the engine in this case scenario. Um, right, so I'm just gonna shine this light on the tank there. That will allow us to check that there is antifreeze in there. You can see the color is pink, pinkish, reddish kind of color. And you can already see this is up to this level more or less up here, right where the tank it's it's got that line there so that's a that's a good level to be at we don't want to be lower than that if you're a little bit lower you can top it up and let's have a look at the manual okay so i'm just shining the light there on the side because you can just about see on the side of that tank the low mark there So that mark there is the low and up here, so this bit here will be the, the full. So you have low and full. And basically that's more or less where you wanna be at. If you found that you are all the way down there, if, you, if your coolant is down here, uh, you definitely want to top it up but at the same time you want to you may want to find out why it's so low uh, it could be a leak or or something like that or somebody changed the coolant and when they bled the system it didn't um, there was a still a little bit of air and whatnot so you can top it up it's not an issue but um, otherwise uh, you should keep an eye just in case if it keeps going down then there could be a leak and you need to check that out in this case scenario we are at the full no issues there so i'm happy with that and uh, i'm going to move on to checking the percentage of antifreeze so i'm going to open that cup open it carefully if you if the engine is hot because uh, there's going to be pressure in there and you don't want any coolant boiling coolant jumping on your face so I'm gonna use this uh, little uh, tool here from Worth. Very good tool for checking percentage of antifreeze. So just suck some fluid in there. I'm just going to do it again. All right. Uh, with this tool, you can check that the uh, coolant is clear. You can just see in that little window there, it's nice and clear, it's not contaminated, it doesn't look dirty. And uh, you can see it's a color, color uh, sort of pink antifreeze and it's giving me around minus 32 or so, which means temperatures will have to reach, be minus 32 outside in order for this coolant to freeze. So it will be able to withstand that kind of freezing, which we don't really get much of that here in the UK, at least not at the moment. So that is a good level to be at. I'm happy with that. Um, so I'm happy with the level and I'm happy with the percentage of antifreeze. And now we can move on to the um, engine oil and oil filter. So I'm just gonna start by pulling the dipstick here and opening the oil filler cap here. That's for the oil. And uh, now we're gonna get the car up and we're gonna drain the oil from underneath and remove the oil filter. So looking at the car from underneath, um, that's the front there. And this part here, we just wanna open this cover
So <clears throat> we have these uh, clips here. To be honest, I have all sorts of different clips on this one because they're all missing, but they're more likely to look like this one here where you pop the center out and the little clip comes out. And I have another one just on the side here. Again, that's a different looking one. <laughs> so we open that and can reveal some plug bolt and oil filter housing there. Sometimes there is a hole here. I could use one of these clips to push that in there. And that's just gonna keep the cover open. <laughs> right, now we need a, I think it's a 14 mil socket for that. And this the socket for the filter housing there. So make yourself, uh, make sure you get yourself an oil pan, catch the oil and uh, that's our sand plug bolt there, 14 mil. So I'm just gonna crack that open. And let the oil out. And again, don't forget that if the engine's been running, um, that oil can be very hot, so don't burn yourself. I did run this engine for a little while just to get that oil coming out a little bit easier. Which, to be fair, it doesn't really look that dirty. So I'm gonna let that drain and then tackle the filter. Okay, now using one of these wrenches, if you search on Google, um, Toyota Verso air filter, um, no, oil filter removal wrench or socket you this will come up this is what it look like they're all the same size so then we can fit that in there and hopefully that isn't going to be too tight but actually make sure it fits properly <laughs> I want it to be coming out. So let me just get it in there properly. There we are. And we can loosen that and make sure you have your oil pan underneath because some oil will drip from there as well. There we are. That's our oil filter in there. Just gonna let that drip there for a little bit. In the meantime, uh, I've got my sunplug bolt here. I put a new copper washer there, just replacing the old one here. And I had this dripping for a little while now as so well. Let's put that in there and we can tighten that so 25 to 30 newton meters usually the figure for those um, just uh, don't over tight it because uh, you want to avoid damaging anything especially the thread on the sump <laughs> so because if you damage that then you have to replace that sump and that will be an extra I don't know how many hours of work so so now that is closed now we can change the filter and refit our new filter in there okay so to remove the filter you just need to pull it out there it should come out without any dramas 
and we can't really see the part number so I'm gonna wait for the new one to come and uh, also we are going to remove this o-ring which I got it out a little bit but it's normally sitting in that in that groove there the one that is there so I just pulled it out a little bit and uh, that's what we want to take out and change as well so everything will be a lot easier with uh, two hands of course I'm just here um, training my one hand special abilities so get rid of that and we're gonna get new ones so I'm just gonna wipe this clean and wait for my new filter okay I got my filter this is the one blueprint ADD 62109 so that one there and some gaskets o-rings so you only need the big one here you don't need the little one <clears throat> the little one is just that on some models you can open the center there to drain the oil first from the housing so um, but this one doesn't have that so we don't need the the little o-ring there so now it's just a matter of pushing this in there like so and now i'm going to fit this o-ring around the groove down there Okay, got the o-ring there and also I apply a little bit of grease around that o-ring you could put some oil as well um, I just put like to put that so when I screw this back on it will the o-ring will slide nicely without getting any rips or any damage I'm just trying to avoid any leaks really um, and you will need this socket to refit this back so you will see that there are two little flaps on the side of this that one and another one on the other side they fit on these grooves so fit it on that groove and then we can fit this back up here okay now we can just tighten that And usually these get tightened to 25 newton meters. It's written in the cover. Actually, just written there. So again, if you have a torque wrench, use it and tighten that to 25 newton meters. And uh, now, just gonna clean the area with some brake cleaner here. Make sure we leave the whole area here nice and clean. And that way, next year, when you check this, or you do your oil change, if there's any oil here, you will know it might be from somewhere else and not from the oil change. <laughs> so uh, now I'm gonna fit this cover back, lower the car, and we put some oil. Okay, got the car down. I'm going to top up some oil in there. No point me filming, really, uh, how I top up some oil. That's where it goes. <laughs> Uh, I'll put the 4.2 liters and uh, I'll come back to it. All right, so I got four liters in there. I just measure 0.2 here or 200 mil, basically. So that's the last bit for me to pour in there. And um, we have our dipstick here. If you look at your manual, shows you how to check this but basically you have those two dots the one on the left represents the minimum and the one on the right here represents the max so um i am aiming to be at the max if i check the oil right now 
it might be a little bit above the max here just because uh, once we start the, the car some of the oil will go into the oil filter housing and will stay there so then you when you check this again it will be down a little bit so let's have a look at this now right so if you can see the shine on that it's just uh, somewhere up here not much above the, the dot there but it's somewhere there which is expected so now I'm going to so this is done we can close this close that up and uh, we're gonna wipe this a little bit put it back in there and now we'll start the start the car make sure everything is running okay engine will circulate quite fast so sounds sweet so I got the blower blowing really high here right engine sounds nice and quiet and um, the oil would have been by now it's gone through the filter and everywhere now so I'm gonna switch this off and uh, we're going to check that oil again just for the sake of showing you what I mean but first I'm going to wipe it because it's gonna be a little bit mixed ideally you want it you want to leave it to rest for a bit having a flat surface and then and check your oil but um, it is in a flat surface I just haven't got time to wait for the whole thing to settle but you can get an idea of what I mean right now we'll see so you may be able to notice uh, let's check on this side the oil is gone down a little bit down to this area here so it is a little bit difficult to see actually <clears throat> because um, the oil is so clean <laughs> that uh, you can't really see I'm gonna try again that's the other reason why it's better to do it when the engine is cold obviously the oil it's feels a little bit thicker right let's try this again don't want to disturb the so I'm not sure that is very visible but it is somewhere just somewhere here a little bit difficult to spot actually but uh, but you can just about see it so basically if you first check it it will be high once you run it a little bit it will be down so anyway I'm happy with the quantities there um, and as far as changing the oil and filter it goes this is it so i hope the video helps and uh, don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video thank you for watching